Well, Polina, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to hang out for a few minutes, there's extra questions in the Q&A and chat that you might um, be able to help with. And I'm going to show people real quickly uh, a little bit more about the, the remote control concept and how that works. So let me just share my screen. Hold on. And switch over. OK, so um, Polina walked you through really well what the idea was with spaces. And remember, those can be category based. So when you're in spaces, you have the ability to use the personal space, public space, and the everything and guest space if you're using free. And if you want to see just private, you can switch over to private. Um, real simply, though, the whole reason why we made this is, is that you might not want to have everything be visible at all times. So sometimes you're, say, at work, and you just want to see work photos. Well, I can click over and now I'm looking at just work pictures and you know just folders that contain work items. So if I go up a level here, uh, I'm seeing the things that I've designated as work. Well, maybe I have a coworker and I want to give them access to those same work photos, or maybe you have a family member who you want to give access to just family photos. Well, you could do that. So one of the easiest ways to do that is you sign in another device to your Milio account. So uh, if you want the most control, use a tablet or a phone. And then under the device panel, you just set it up. So you can go on in and choose one of the devices that you've logged in, switch to one of those devices, like I'm going to pick this phone here, and assign a different space. So instead of that phone seeing everything, I could assign the family space. Now, that's great, but if you don't put passwords on these, then people can switch in and out of them. So one of the things we did is the ability when you manage a space, you can actually assign passwords. So you could say, for example, hey, uh, you can't change out of the family space unless you have a password. And I don't want anybody in the family space to be able to access settings. But I do want them to be able to have their pictures backed up. And it's OK that they can edit and share. And that's great. But I don't want them deleting things. So it's OK for them to add new things. But I don't want to have to worry about them deleting files when they're in the family space. So I've got files and folders, albums, add and modify, people, add and modify, and events add and modify, right? And then under modification, you'll see specific things like, do you allow them to do keywords or categories or things like that, right? So this just lets you kind of set the rules up. Then you can decide what's required. So for example, is there a password? Yes. And do you need to use the password to exit? Well, yes or you could assign a unique password. So now we'll save that. And now what's really cool is all those devices that I put into family mode will have those limits. So they will see the pictures that are in family mode, right? So I'm gonna switch mine to everything mode so I have control over devices. See, now I can use devices, but I could take the phones in our family and say, hey, put that phone into family space and put the other family member's phone into family space. And now they would be in family mode, seeing the family pictures with the ability to share and the ability to look at things and the ability to make basic edits because that's what I gave them permission, but they couldn't switch to work photos. They couldn't delete things. They couldn't do other stuff. So that's kind of the, the gist of that is that you can set up a set of rules for a, a role and define what that user can do. Now, I'm going to show you what's possible here, but you can, you know, make custom ones however you want. OK, so um, the code to exit spaces, Yolanda, would be if you wanted to make sure that people couldn't switch to another space. So if you wanted to keep them in that view so that they couldn't just switch to do something. So that would lock them in. 
Now, if you want to get really granular with each family member, you can do that. Remember, you can click on a folder and say, this is personal or this is, this is a family one, right? These are work photos. That's folder by folder. Or you can step within and assign that to specific folders. So if you want to go through and say, this was a family trip, this one was a family trip, right? And I can go through and here I just imported all of these things from Facebook and it made a folder out of each album. So that makes it really straightforward if I want to assign that category to a specific item. And then you just simply define that for your device. So it's pretty straightforward. Now let's see here. Can you use that for any family member or do the family member need a Milio account or just the app? So what you're doing here, Donna, is you are logging them into your Milio account but you are giving them restricted access to just part of it. So this is kind of like, you know, the people who share their Netflix password, except we're not gonna get mad at you or uh, raise your rates. So, you know, we let you have as many devices signed into your account as you want, and you can lock each device into a specific role. So if you want to do this for trusted people, this works great, meaning these are regular coworkers that you're always working with, Maybe you have a Milio account for your small business, or this is your family and you're all working on family history. So let's say I'm doing a family history project with five other relatives. I can come on over and click on spaces and choose to manage spaces. I have to put my password in and I'm gonna make a new space, add, and I'll call this family history because we're going to collaborate and work together. Okay. Then I'm going to assign a unique passcode to this. Okay. There we go. And now it's assigned. And I'll also say you need to know the code in order to exit. That way everyone's locked into the space that I give access to, and they won't see my other pictures that I haven't assigned to family history. So that works well. And then we can say, what are they allowed to do? Well, I don't want them to see, uh, you know, I want them to see public photos. No, I don't want public photos. I want them to see just the photos that I've categorized as family history. I made a custom category called family history that contains, you know, photos that are not private and photos that are family history. Great, nice and simple. And I'll click add. Now, I look that over. I could add other quick collections if there was other things I wanted to share with them. Remember, a quick collection can just be a, a, a category here. A quick collection is based on categories only. So I just added my family history category. And you can make as many custom categories as you want up to a total category count of 64. What do I want these people to be able to do? Oh, I want them to see the calendar and the map and albums and folders and people view but they don't need to look at devices and they don't need to do any deletion of stuff. So that's simple enough. And I want them to be able to um, add pictures and modify things, but not delete things. So they have other pictures they wanna put into the project, they can. So I'm just going through and looking at what I want. And this just sets those rules of what the other family members are allowed to do. And so you just look it over and say, okay, yeah, I want to be able to modify files. I want to be able to help with tagging, but I don't want them keywording things or recategorizing. And uh, it seems like everybody in my family is unable to properly edit photos. They don't know how to do it. They always do weird overexposed edits. So I'm just going to turn that off and say they can't make visual changes and they don't need settings and I don't need their devices to import. So now we've got it and I'll say save. And so there is the family history project. And here's what's cool. You can even hide those things in a menu. So if you don't want that to appear in the menu, you can still disable it, but then activate it from here. But I'll leave that as is. So now for every family member who's gonna participate in that family history project, I can simply go in and give them that permission to be a member of the family history project. So I'll just jump on in there and assign the role.
and it keeps it pretty simple here. So we can go to the device panel and say, hey, these family members are working on family history. I type in the passcode that I am allowed to make that change. And then I'm going to assign this one here. Hey, they're allowed to only work on family history. There we go. And now that device is set up that way. And when they log in on the phone, that's all they're going to see. Does that make sense to everyone? And so this gives you that ability to remotely set up that device and what's on it. And look at this, you can go under device sync policies and do the same thing and say, hey, on this phone, I want to sync everything that's in the family history collection. So that same quick collection, boom, can be used for syncing. And so now the phone will get all those family history photos synced to it at full quality. And then all you do is go through and browse your folder view and mark things as family history. So I'm gonna go into my scans folder here and say, hey, uh, the, all these old family photos here, categories, click, uh, those belong in the family history project, apply. And uh, these wedding photos here, that's family history, click, apply. And so you could just go through and start to assign those categories as needed, apply. And if you need new categories, just click and you can add your own categories with that list. So that's all it was, is I made a custom space for a particular project. In this case, the project is family history. And then I went in and tagged all the folders that I wanted in that project with the family history category. And then I just set a device to use the family history space and to use the family history quick collection to sync. And now that device is only showing those pictures, only has those pictures at original quality. And I've limited what other family members can do with those pictures, but they can collaborate with me and have the same family history as we're getting these things organized and ready for share or a bigger project. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's take a couple of questions and then up next, we're going to be going into JC and he's going to show you how to use all the tools, the batch, uh, the batch face tagging tools, the dedupe tools and the declutter tools. But, uh, JC, Angela, were there any questions that we want to do? I see one here. How do they sign into your account? So um, we have a method now of sign in that is a pin code method. That's pretty simple. So if you don't use that method, you can contact support and they'll switch you over. But all new accounts use magic links and pin codes. So they would just sign in with your email. And then like just like if you're signing in a family member to your iCloud plan, uh, they would you would get a pin code on your device and then you would just tell them the pin code. It's a one time use code and it only works on that device. So they couldn't sign any other devices in or give that code to anyone else. So when you get that pin code, when you sign in, uh, it's a one time sign in and it's just a six digit code that we send you and you have a certain time window to use it and it can only be used on the device that requested it. So that's the easiest way to log it in. Uh, or you can sign into a device and then leave them signed in, but keep it assigned there uh, and manage that way. Now, later, we're going to talk about shared albums, which is a great way for people you don't want to give access to your account, but you still want to share them content. And we'll explore that a little bit later. But that's the easiest way to do that is with the pin code login. JC, Angela, or uh, any other things that you want to cover or questions that we should go through? Because we have about five minutes worth of questions time now. There were quite a few questions. It looks like they're answered. Um, uh, family history will include scan records in PDF or TIFF format. Yes, we support PDF. We support TIFF. All that's fine. So uh, if I'm in my family history space here, let me just switch to it. Family history project. And uh, that, you know, that's going to adjust what's shown, which folders have access, right? So now I'll just go up here to this top level and I can go here under by file and file type. And you can see all the different file types that I have in my library, but I do certainly have some PDFs in there. Um, and I do have TIFF files. So, you know, I can click, there's some files that are TIFFs from that project, right? I didn't have any PDFs in my family history project, but I certainly do in my main one. So we support that, and you can also turn on support for Word docs and Excel and 
uh, text files and everything else. And you can see there that we have a wide range of file formats that are supported. Uh, Rich, there's a question in chat from Jackie asking, mm -hmm. can I assign different permissions by space? One device has access to family history and scuba diving with different permissions. Sure. So what you can do there is you can decide to put a pin code onto each space that's unique. And so then when they go to switch to that space, uh, they're going to be asked for the code when they go to log in, and then you can do that. So you can give them, you know, you can assign a unique code to each space and then say, hey, you have access to this space and this space, uh, and then they would be able to access it. So you just decide uh, and give each one a unique code and that works great. Or you can make a custom one and just put all those categories together. So if I was making a space for say my son, I could just manage a space and say, hey, I wanna make a space called Michael. And you know, this is for all my son's devices. And then I would go into the quick collections and say, oh, Michael should have access to the family photos add and the family history photos add and our uh, travel photos if I had a travel category here or anything else right and uh, now I've given him access to two categories and he's got access to both so then I could just you know give him what permissions he has and save and now I could just sign in Michael to my account on his devices and assign the Michael space to the Michael's devices. So you can, if this is very flexible, you can make a quick collection that is designed for multiple people or make a quick collection uh, with, you know, and then with categories in it and then step in and set that up by person. I hope that answers your question. Yes, 